Hey again guys and welcome back. Looking around my workshop this morning I had two choices. Uh, clean my workspace or film a mailbag video. I guess it's time for another mailbag. First one up we have electronic components. I am, yeah I hope so. Um, this one cost me a lot of money. $18.33 uh, March 17th to April 4th. USB cable. Oh, sweet! Let's take a closer look at this. It's important to note that uh, you don't actually get a good sense of scale when you see these things online. So what we have here is a DuPont... Yeah, sort of like a DuPont uh, female and male adapter ribbon cable. Um, a USB cable with a... Oh, that's good actually that they sent this because I don't think it was in the picture on the listing. But this is that weird type of... I think it's a USB type mini? Something like that. Anyways, I don't have a lot of these cables in stock, so that's good. And then this guy, which is much smaller than I thought, is a... Um, let me... Pick Kit 3. So this is a programmer to program PIC microcontrollers. Uh, Julian Eilert did a series of videos on uh, programming a PIC microcontroller. And I intend to also program some PIC microcontrollers because I am cheap. And the cheapest Arduinos you can get are the DigiSpark style, the little, like, little guys. And they're about two bucks or so Canadian. But I think I can get PIC microcontrollers for even cheaper and honestly if you only need to flash a couple LEDs or you know do something very simple like that I don't think you need anything more than just a small PIC microcontroller so that being said I don't actually have a PIC microcontroller yet so this is kind of useless until I get that so on to the next one then we've got uh, iron tip and I O eight two five six nine times two. Ordered on March six, came April fourth. Pretty good, uh, pretty reasonable shipping times. Although I have to say, um, a lot of the stuff is coming out of uh, Taiwan now instead of China proper. Um, okay, these guys are a little bit small. There's two of them, so let's zoom in and have a closer look. So what these are are replacements for my favorite soldering tips. So my soldering iron, which is a uh, Sigma 60D, but it's in like a 858 clone type thing. My favorite soldering tip is actually not this one that is on it now, but it is, um, where'd it go? Oh, here. It's this uh, chisel tip, because I find the chisel tip is a good mix of compactness, because if you flip it on its side, it's pretty thin, and um, contact area if I need to, you know, get really wide in there. Uh, the tip that was on the iron when it came, I believe, was either this pointy one or this pointy one. No, I think it was this pointy one. And I don't like the pointy one, actually. I, I really don't. I feel the contact area isn't, uh, isn't enough. And so I've been using this guy, this chisel tip, for quite a while now. And I realize, since I don't like the other tips that I have, um, it might be a good idea to get, you know, replacement tips before I need them. Um, but now I'm seeing that it looks like there's a slight difference in the length of the tips. So let's hope. Let's see, this is the original chisel. Does that match? Oh, this guy's a bit longer. Let's hope it works. Oh, I don't know. This does not come out anymore, no. I wonder if the depth is the same. So let's see. Put this little screwdriver in. Put my thumb right on there. And let's see if my original tips... Oh, it's close. It's like a millimeter off. 
Hopefully it works, but let's see. So it slides in, which is nice. It does get clamped down, which is also nice. But now I guess we should uh, give it a test run to see if it'll actually solder. So turning on my soldering iron now, temperature is climbing and I need something to solder. I guess I could uh, touch up the pads on this board. Uh, two, three hundred, three thirty, three fifty. All right, so I'm going to give that uh, just a moment to heat soak, and then I'm going to go and see if I can touch up one of these pads. So it looks like that one I cut flush with the flush cutters. You can see the shiny there. Let's see if I can rewarm it with this one. might need to actually treat the tip first. Let's see. I can melt solder on it. It's good. And yeah, seems to work just fine. Now I have extra tips for when Old Faithful here kicks the bucket. Next one up is this uh, expansion board module. And I guess that's the number there, and times five. Oh yeah, how much was it? So ordered it March 5th, got it April 3rd. It is $3.39 Canadian. Oh, gotcha. Let's zoom in to take a closer look. So I think I got these guys for data logging projects because they are real-time clocks. Well, they're supposed to be at least. I wouldn't know one if it uh, bit me in the butt. But this thing has a space for a coin cell and I, it's supposed to keep time. Uh, there's two chips on here. Let's see what they are. That would be DS1307Z and ATMTC086, whatever that means. There is a crystal here, so that crystal must be for keeping the time, which is pretty good. And these modules are really cheap, like $3, and I got five of them. Um, I got these because, uh, oh, and they're I squared C. Would you look at that? I got these because um, I want to do temperature and humidity logging. And with that, I want to have a sort of like a time and date function. So I can actually check at what time the measurement was taken and what it was. And then I can probably plot it out in uh, Excel or something. So that's what these guys are for. But uh, I'm not going to be able to test them right now because I don't really know how they work. So let's go take a look at the eBay listing. Actually, before that, I just realized there's only four real-time clock modules in there. Huh. I'm short one. So five pieces, DS1307 module, I squared C, RTC, real-time clock module fit for Arduino. This is the one I ordered. And uh, as you can see, the price has increased and they added shipping now. It is what it is. Um, so let's see what kind of information we're going to get. There are no pictures loaded. Item special, brand new and high quality. I guess we'll see. Without battery, please know it. I know it. This is the DS1307 real-time clock developed by one of our designer, Wayman. Thanks, Wayman. The module comes fully assembled. Yeah, it did look assembled, except for the uh, header pins. Uh, accessed via the I squared C protocol. I love I squared C, so hopefully that's good. Two wire I squared C, yep, that's true. Hours and minutes, so hours, minutes, seconds, AM, PM. Also, day, month, date year. Good. Um, 
without the battery, you need a 2032 battery. That's all right. One hertz output pin. Oh, really interesting. I guess you can use the clock signal. That's great. 56 bytes of non-volatile memory available to user. And um, yeah, not too much information on this device, but that's why I'm gonna make a separate video on it before I attach it to my project. So we're gonna take a look at how it works and um, see if we can get it to output anything. I guess we can go on to the next one. Next one up, we have electronic components. Uh, this was, yeah, I tore the bag a little bit trying to get this, get the sticker off. Order it March 13th, got it April 6th, $3.26. And this is actually, I know exactly what this is. This is actually for a upcoming project called New Dorizons. You can contemplate what the project will be, but let's zoom in and take a look at these guys. And what these guys are, are actually logic gates. These are, I think it's a quad AND gate. So it's a two input, one output, uh, quad AND gate. So there's four AND gates inside each one of these chips. And that's actually a pretty decent price, uh, three bucks for 10 of them. I'm not sure if they are legit. I'm guessing not, but who knows. And again, this is something that um, will not be easily tested in this video because I would like to make its own standalone video to explain how to use these and, and how they work and also to experiment with different voltages. So instead, let's go look at the data sheet and then we can move on to the next one. And here is the data sheet for the CD4081B. So the interesting part of this is that it's a two input AND gate, but four of them. So actually this is kind of what it looks like, right? Four AND gates, and then each AND gate has two inputs. And this is exactly what I was looking for when I ordered this IC. But I love these old sort of analog electronic parts, which have the old scanned in data sheets. And you can tell that like this stuff here is scanned in and this stuff here was added you see, revised September 2003. So that's really interesting. So DC supply voltage, uh, negative 0.5 to positive 20 volts. Uh, input voltage range, all inputs, my negative 0.5 to 0.05. Okay. Oh, to VDD. There we go, 0 0.05. So yeah, you can have an input go all the way up to whatever you have your supply voltage. That's good, plus a half volt of leeway. Um, plus or minus 10 milliamps input current, each input, pretty good. So yeah, this, uh, this data sheet is what we're gonna use to test this thing out. And if I'm not mistaken, it'll work for my, for my use case, but we'll just have to see because I need to do very, something very specific with this IC and I need it to be low current draw, which this thing is. And uh, I don't really, I've never had the chance to really play with sort of analog logic like this, or I guess digital logic, but you know, discrete logic. And so I'm really excited to take that on and uh, you know, become a quote unquote real electronics enthusiast. And last but certainly not least, uh, this one here that gives it away right in the title, one times ACS758LCB-10. Should be one of those in there. Ordered it on March 5th, arrived on April 1st, $6.85. A little bit more pricey, but if this thing works as well as it claims to, should be good. And so, do we have what is actually written on the package? It looks sort of similar. No, didn't cut it well. Yeah, it looks like it. Let's take a closer look at this. And yep, that's exactly what we expected here. This is a current module, and uh, it's interesting because 
this module just has like a shunt built in and it's supposed to be super low um, resistance and then it gives you outputs over here if you give it power and ground so it's like a shunt which is super low resistance and a precise amplifier all built into one and um, oh actually no there's the amplifier there interesting so yeah you give it power and, and ground and then it has a little amp underneath there you can probably see what that amp is but not me that is 222C not sure it's very hard to see but um, yeah you put your you put this in uh, in series with your circuit and you'll be able to read apparently positive and negative current and we'd have to check the eBay listing to see how far it goes but again this one here deserves its own video so 1 times ACS758 LCB 100B PFF T um, these numbers here I seem to remember that they specify the type of ACS758 and uh, when I make the video on this I'll uh, walk through the data sheet because there's a lot of information there so um, I did not pay shipping on this this is new which uh, which makes sense a lot of things have changed since and yeah it's a nice little module let's see what they have to say about it industry leading noise performance through proprietary amplifier and filter design techniques so that's the amp on the back there, 2272C. Uh, integrated shield greatly reduces capacitive coupling from current inductor to die due to high uh, DVDT signals and prevents offset drift in high side, high voltage applications. I think I read that you can use this on high or low side, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, total output error improvement through gain offset trim over temperature small package size yeah it's pretty it's pretty small uh, a hall I see this is the important part here it's a um, hall sensor so it doesn't actually I don't think it uses a, a shunt it just uses a piece of wire over a sensor so that's interesting ultra low power loss um, 100 micro ohms internal resistance conductor Isolated uh, 3 to 5.5 volt single supply operation, which is amazing because that means it'll work with Arduino. 120 kilohertz typical bandwidth. So that means um, this thing can sample 120,000 times per second, I believe. That's what that means. Um, 3 microsecond output rise time in response to step input current. I actually wonder if. Uh, if we can sample this on the oscilloscope rather than an Arduino to get a really nice current measurement. Uh, factory trim for accuracy? Yeah, well, that doesn't mean this isn't just a factory second. Extremely stable output offset voltage, uh, nearly zero magnetic hysteresis, and package include. So yeah, this one here has a it has a very complex data sheet. So I want to make a complete separate video on this one. And so this lovely bunch of coconuts makes up today's mailbag video. I want to thank my Patreons again for supporting me and enabling me to order this stuff and make cool projects. You guys are the ones that I think about the most when I am making videos, so thank you so much for that. If you want to join my awesome group of Patreons, there is a link in the description below. I also want to thank my viewers because without you guys, um, YouTube wouldn't know if this content is any good, so they wouldn't serve it to other people, so thanks again. And if you want to know the best way to support me without having to spend a dime, it would be to subscribe to the channel. I guess now I'm stuck cleaning my workspace because I have no more mailbag items to open, so I'll see you in the next one.